I'm Linda Thompson, and welcome to The Author Show. Today we're talking to a gentleman named George Steropoli. I hope I got that right. And he has written a book, Establishing the New America of Independent HOA Principalities. Now I've got to admit that when I got the information about this, I was a little bit wary of this interview because I've been on my HOA board for eight years. So we don't know what's going to transpire during this interview, but it will be interesting. Welcome to the show, George. Well, thank you for inviting me here, especially on this very controversial topic that I know everyone's be having arms about. I'm well, glad to be here. It's going to be a lot of fun, George. Uh, what you say in your intro is whether one likes it or not, or one is for or against it, there has been a change in our social, cultural, and political environment brought on by brought on not by violent revolution, but by a quiet innovation in housing the HOA communities. Explain. That's a big mouthful I put in that little paragraph. But if you take a broad view of the homeowner association concept, the legal structure, it is set up autocratic, non-democratic non organizations. It is a corporation form of government. It is unanswerable to the state as a private contract. As a private contract, the Fourteenth Amendment and the Constitution don't apply. This is why we go fight at the legislature with people like Eddie Farnsworth to restore flag rights, to restore solar panel rights because they are independent of the government of the United States and the legislature likes that. And that is why there is a change. Over 20 percent of Americans live in homeowner associations across the country and that's big enough to warrant someone's attention. Um, they are just unanswerable to our government. Like somebody shot the neighbor across the street or painted their door purple, uh, they're very apathetic about it. They complain about the monthly or the quarterly dues and then they go on about their business. They don't participate or anything like that. What brought you to bring this to the forefront? I've been getting calls since 2000 from homeowners. I have a national website and I wrote this book based on my answers and my commentaries to these types of problems. The very legal concept of the homeowner association is causing these problems because it is a corporation government and people like to say, hey, you can vote. Well, they have a thought that you can vote in China and Cuba. So it requires a much larger participation in a government than the person who's buying the house. He just wants to buy a house. But to change anything, you know, a reporter in California said this. When you move into a homeowner association, it's like being married to your neighbors. Mm -hmm. You know, a community property state, you've got to get their approval, and they just don't care. So that fallacy of the homeowner association, go out there and vote your board up, is a fallacy of the concept, and you've lost your rights. I don't want the next door neighbor having three junk cars on his driveway and parking on the yard, nor do I want the neighbor on the other side to have purple window shutters and a blue door. How do you approach that? You've hit a, a very good uh, point in all my work um, of advocating for change and reforms. That question is why do people continue to live in a homeowner association? One, because these towns are mandating it. You can't buy a house anyplace else other than in a, in a homeowner association. And the people really don't care about voting. And your government does not give you the government, which is your constitution under the CCNRs, is cited for the, for the board. You don't have fair elections. You don't have uh, um, dispute resolution processes. But you must go along. Yes, they'll complain and they'll complain, but they'll never. You know why? Because you make one, one, one excuse. You get the board kicked off, and they can take your house away. You can't do anything to them, but they can take your house away. So that is a tremendous it's amount of pressure. An hour, an hour yes, it is. You don't pay your assessments because you are upset with them. They can take your house away. If you have a dispute elsewhere outside the homeowner association with fair credit debt, debt letters of um, fair debt collections practices, you have a dispute. What do you do with the credit card dispute? You send them a certified letter, and what happens? Everything stops. Not with the homeowner association. You got a dispute? Keep paying your dues. You just lost your entire leverage. Keep paying your dues, and then we want to decide whether we're going to talk to you or not. So there's some inequities, and I, and I address these here in the book. I'm trying to get the people to understand. Look what you've opted into. Do you know your home is collateral for the survival of the homeowners association? You keep on paying until you die or move out. 
There's no breaks. There's no 30-year warranty. There's no end of the end of the credit. Okay, but then there are those associations or those communities who love their great big pools and all of their clubhouses and all of their golf courses and all the rest of this these extraneous accoutrements that we must have around our multi-million dollar homes. Amenities. And then when we get all of that, we complain about what it's going to cost. Yes. Well, here again, it's like consistently lowering taxes to where we're not going to pay anything. Who's going to pay for it? Somebody has to pay. Well, you've had a very good point because I'm trying to bring down here some of the problems with the homeowner association. You've got this big foreclosure problem. And when you, who has to dig in and pay the, problem, the pocket? Well, you wanted your private community, you wanted your private amenities, well now you have to pay privately for your amenities. And the management is a poor management because no one has collected reserves for this. Solid management would have collected reserves. Did you ever think that you could have a landscape company, take care of your landscape? You could have a pool maintenance company, you could have a clubhouse without this huge onus of the CCNRs and the law, as I says, we can take you home and you have no homestead protection. But if you can't get six people to show up in a meeting when there's 350 in your community, how in the devil are you going to get everybody to pay for the upkeep of the pool? Now you've hit on what I say in the book, the legal error and fallacy of the Homeowner Association. It is built for a high level of participation that does not exist in our society and the proponents and as I say in the book, go out there and tell you vote, vote the bums out. You can vote the bums out. Um, Nobody wants a job. That's right. So, but you have this legal thing. No one has told you that, you know, you can you'll be very happy. You can be very happy five, ten years into it. But then you hit the Russian roulette game where you get your board upset or you pick, pick someone else off at the board where your neighbor complains about you and you say, this is unfair, I'm not going to do anything. You can't do this to me. And then you turn around for support. There's nobody supporting you. There are no statements from the government. When you call it truth in lending, there's no truth in advertising to tell you what you're getting into, that your lawyer works for you but you pay his dues. And if you try to call him up and talk to him, he says to you, you're not my client. So there are basic inequities which I'm trying to bring up to people who move into the house that have been trying to get to the legislatures across the state. Yes, there are, they, do, they provide value. Yes, they, they make nice homes. But don't say like one guy did before the legislature, I like my homeowners association because it keeps the blight out. And this senator sitting at the committee said, excuse me, I don't live in a homeowners association. I surely don't live in a blighted area. Why would people want to buy this book? People want to buy this book so that they can realize that in five years, when they find out they have no power, this book will tell them why they have no power. This book will tell them why they should move, not move into a homeowner's or why they should go to the local planning board and say, why are you forcing the developer to put a homeowner association and not protecting my rights under the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. You must read this to protect your big. What is your biggest asset? Most people, their home. Okay, got a question for you. What do you do with your fun time? <laughs> That's what my wife keeps on telling me. When are you going to give up on these homeowner association problems? Um, I've been to the legislature so many times, and we're trying to convince them, and they just. The book, the book says they want to support homeowner associations. They think it's the best thing. You know why? Because your government gets a free ride, but you know what? You still pay your real estate taxes. They George, offload everything. On, on that note, I think I'm going to say it's been a pleasure talking to you. We're almost out of time. If there's one short thing that you would like to leave our listeners with as to what the premise is here, what would that message be? The Homeowner Association and its support by your local government and state governments has created a new American revolution, not, okay? A new American experiment, and that's the authoritarian corporate homeowner association. Privatized functions of government itself, not services, but the functions. And this is the change that's across America. Okay. George, it's been an interesting discussion. Thank you so much for joining us today. It. I'm glad you had me, and I really appreciate this airing. I'm Linda Thompson, and once again, thank you for joining us today. A very interesting discussion. Hope to see you next time, and remember, a word, book can change a life one word at a time.